this, this is Bike World Off-Road. It is as far as you can possibly get from knee down on a V4 Ducati at Bahrain International Circuit. This is dirty, stinky, sweaty, muddy off-road riding. We're going to get stuck, we're going to fall down embankments, we're going to be up to our waist in mud and water, always smiling, and we're going to finish it off on the top of a mountain with a beer at the end of each shoot. And to provide us with a bit of authenticity, I've got my Dakar riding compadre Neil Hawker along for the ride. He thinks it's going to be fun. We'll find out how that turns out. Join us for an absolute blast riding bikes off-road. Ducati 916, the MV Augusta F4, hell even the CCM Bobber. These are bikes that are works of art. People buy them and put them in their living rooms and never ride the damn things. Just appreciate them for the, the beauty and their styling. <laughs> the, these two bikes aren't anything like that, are they? But we don't need beauty. That's what we got Neil for. Look at him. These bikes aren't about looking good. These bikes are mini adventure bikes. That's what they're sold as. This is KTM's 390 Adventure, and that is a Royal Enfield Himalayan. This thing is supposed to be the miniature version of the 790 Adventure, which has proved itself time and time again as an incredibly capable off-road adventure bike. That Himalayan was born from years and years and years of Royal Enfields being dragged up the side of the Himalayan mountains. That's the kind of original Indian adventure bike, if you like. Our job now is to find out if they really are fit for adventure. So we're going to go out, we're going to get stuck, and see which one makes it home. <laughs> right, Neil Orca. <laughs> Should we uh, rock, paper, scissors for who goes first? Yeah. On, are we going on three? So one, two, show. One, two, three, show. One, two, three, show. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, yeah. I won. No, no, I? no, no. That was a fist. That's one, a rock. So I won so now. That's out three. One, one two, three, three, show. One, two, three, show. Ah, no, no, that's one all. This is a counter. It's best no, of three. I won the first one. No, I won the first one. It was a fist. Right, all or nothing. One, one two, two, three, show. show. One, two, three, show! Ah! <laughs> you go first! <laughs> you Do you want help? You definitely stitch around. I'll, I'll shout when I want help. Alright. Because I know you're just going to ride straight through clean and be no, really annoying. I'm not. Come on, little Himalayan. This is our time to shine. I might actually already be stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make any promises. Right. What would Dougie Lampkin do? He'd have his feet up, that's a start. <laughs> right. Himalayan through the river. Woo! There's not a lot of room here. It is blooming slippery. Oh, he's making a right meal of that. And what we need to do here is we need to get through the river and in the process make it as hard as possible for Neil to follow me. Fair play. Oh. Right, I better get him. I said be waiting for me. Yes! Yes! I am brilliant! Um, yeah. Woohoo! Well, I've got wet feet. <laughs> Don't get washed away. <laughs> Are we going up there? We're going to go up that. That might be a two-man lift.
Yes, little KTM! <laughs> 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 so we have, against better judgment, dropped into a ravine with a river. We've spent an hour getting through. We had to stop for lunch halfway through because we were knackered. And now we've found our way out and it's up that massive hill. It probably doesn't look much on a camera, but it, you can't walk up it. It's a steep, slippery bank with a big step and an off-camera rock slab to run into it. Neil's got a habit of making this stuff look really easy, so... We'll let him do that, and then when I do it, you'll see how hard it is. Go on, Neil! I don't know, I forgot it. I'm telling myself I haven't got it before I even try. That's not very good. Woo! -hoo -hoo! Yeah! You beautiful, ugly little duckling! <laughs> this calls for a celebration donut! <laughs> We're out the river, Neil. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, this thing has, has no right to be as good as it was up there. That you stood up on it and it gripped. It rode up there like a trials bike. <laughs> it rode up there like a trials bike. It's a little bit lower to the ground and it spends a bit more time dragging its belly on stuff. Hmm. The KTM's definitely got it beat there. And it's a little bit more nimble, the KTM. Like, you can see like when you're popping the front wheel around. Yeah. This doesn't do that as well. No. But when it comes to a big, snotty, horrible climb, this just tractors up it. Yeah. I surprised myself. I mean, they're sold as mini adventure bikes. That is no mini adventure. No, <laughs> that's, that's, adventure bikes aren't supposed to be in a river. <laughs> the best bit is, Neil, we've even had lunch and we've gone, <laughs> we've travelled a mile. Not, not even a mile, I don't reckon. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've had a costume change as well. Yeah, you had to get a new helmet because you were precious about your Dakar one. I think for what we're trying to achieve on these bikes, that's unreal. Yeah, that's a gnarly climb and we just rode two budget adventure bikes up there on road tyres. That's worth mentioning, like, mm. you know, you can do a lot to these to make them more adventure, you can prep them, but we wanted to run them as they come, straight out the box from KTM and Royal Enfield. No prep, no work. We haven't even let the tyres down. <laughs> Let's go and find some fast flowing trails and some big puddles to splash through. Let's go and ride a bit of that stuff. Yeah. We, I think we've proved that they are better in a snotty off camber trail section than they've any right to be. The, let's go for a, an adventure let's go and ride some these, miles yeah because that's the other thing adventure kit is not great when you're at Stood two miles an hour <laughs> or in a stream let's go and cool ourselves down let's do it finally made it out of that gully <laughs> and now we're into some properly beautiful trails up in the hills. Awesome riding to be had here. <laughs> and the hippie's brilliant, it sort of bounces and clatters its way through. <laughs> With a big daft smile on its face and its tongue hanging out the side of its ugly mouth. <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant fun. KTM is kind of scampering around ahead of us, but it it just cannot shake. The old faithful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can um, you can certainly move around the bike in the stood up position. It, it lets you get into a nice position. I give him that. Even on these road tires, on this stuff, it's nice and smooth. On tracks and trails like this, it's eating it up nicely uh, we've got a dirt bikes coming and playing move over and let the other one by all right They don't look very comfortable though, do they? No, nah, they're not very comfortable. They've got there. no luggage at all. It's 
So Neil's already been through. He nearly drowned. We're well, making him stand in the deep puddle and then I'm going to work my way through this left-hand side now. <laughs> Come on, little Himalayan. Wee -hee -hee. Come on, little boat. Yeah! Nice and steady when you're going through water. You're trying to keep the bow wave ahead of you. If you're getting wet, if you're getting splashed, you're going too fast. When you're going nice steady speed, when something happens, you can react to it. When you're going too fast and getting splashed, if something happens, it's sometimes too late to react and you get a little swimming lesson. made it we have our authentic camp set up neil I, I think we can break the fourth wall a bit here can't we cheers mate <laughs> cheers we do a lot of videoing and testing and different shoots with the guys at bike world it's awesome fun i'm gonna go out and say today has been the most fun i've had on a shoot for a very long time yeah it was brilliant we said at the beginning the very top the first thing we said are these bikes fit for adventure i think yes uh, of course, yes, yeah, bloody hell, well, yeah, I mean, firstly, it doesn't really matter what you class as an adventure, each individual has got their own adventure, and whether it's gravel roads, tricky, gnarly climbs and descents and whatever it is, these bikes are capable of a lot. <laughs> a, lot a lot more, oh, smoky right, eyes, yeah? yeah, I've got smoky eyes. A lot more than they really they were ever designed to do. We took them to some ridiculous places today. We got some funny looks from the boys on the enduro bikes yeah. when they came past us shaking well, their heads. I, I thought it was you, so I sped up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, didn't want to let him pass. First, let's talk about that KTM that you've been riding. You kind of started out on that. We swapped at lunchtime. Yeah. So that's KTM's 390 Adventure. It's still a, you know, it looks very, very expensive and posh, but it is still a, a, a budget for an adventure bike. It's a yeah. budget bike. Yeah. It's aimed at an A2 license, am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so. a budget adventure bike. Yeah. I wasn't expecting much. <laughs> no. I've, I've been very lucky and rode a lot of beautiful machines and, and lots of different motorcycles in lots of different areas. And I, I, I came at it with a, a probably a, a negative point of view, but I've come away from it smiling my head off. Yeah. <laughs> and it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you today pivot to Neil was putting the front wheel of the KTM up on banks and hop turning wheelie in the front wheel round 180 within two minutes of getting on it and it was like suddenly you kind of realize that this isn't just a budget tied up road bike that is actually a, a legit off-road bike yeah it might not be the the flashiest one the best suspension the best whatever but it's bloody capable so let's be brutal then i'm going to put you on the spot here because the ktm was very capable did a lot what happened when you went over a rock fast I broke the sump guard. No, no, yeah, it's a flimsy plastic, thin, brittle piece of plastic protecting all the expensive, expensive nice bits. <laughs> nice bits. Start motor, the sump, and all that sort of stuff's under there, and went over rock. The front wheel flipped the rock and it hit the sump guard. So I didn't even hit anything, and it and it shattered into pieces. Yeah, that was the one. We looked at the sump guard at the beginning of this, and I hate we didn't want to be those people who went, oh, that's not strong enough, but definitely. We thought that's not strong enough and yeah we, and we were, were sadly proved right. right but that's really the only issue we've had in a day of taking it stupid places it wasn't supposed to be yes yeah the only other thing i found a little bit annoying on the ktm and it's a boring age-old complaint is that if you turn it off and turn it on or if you stall it it resets your your traction control setting so if you turn the traction yeah. control off and you stall it it turns it back on again which and isn't i stalled annoying. it a few times i stalled it a lot doing that so i'd yeah, it, it's, it is annoying and it shouldn't, it, and with the ABS, I'm sure the ABS has to stay on now, right? Yeah, Am I yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So. So the, but you can turn the rear ABS off, so it wasn't too bad. Right, like okay. But the, the, the traction control thing, 
And I, I found the traction control quite intrusive off-road. Yeah. It cut in but quite But there is quite a dongle you can get to fix that. So, so that, that, is, that problem that, is moot, but it was a bit annoying today. Let's talk about the Himalayan. That started out the underdog and remains the underdog, but in a charming way. It, you know, the KTM is sharper, lighter, more powerful, has better suspension, better technology. So this should be like a complete whitewash. It should be like, well, there was only one bike, the Himalayan yeah. was rubbish. But every single time you wrote the Himalayan off, it just it like doggedly well. chugged its way out it of the situation. It does well at something that it shouldn't do. Th that bit early when we came out the river. We, we, oh. were, we were buried in the river. We'd been in there ages. We were sweating buckets, hot, tired. I watched Neil ride the KTM up this step bank up out the river. And genuinely, I almost asked you to ride the Himalayan up because I was looking <laughs> at it going, I don't want to do that. that and then horrible. straight away you went up, stood up, gripped all the way up. I was off the bike, off the bike on the KTM. The, the point where you were pushing on the KTM, that the Himalayan just was just chugging. Duh, duh, duh. And it that, was pretty. It was. It was very impressive to watch, and it, it's, it can't be all you. It must have been definitely the bike. No, it's yeah. Definitely not me. And, and that's, well done. That's well the, done, Himalayan. That's the story of the Himalayan, really. It, it, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's a little bit of an ugly duckling. It's. Yeah. A bit slow, it's pretty agricultural, a daft old thing, yeah. but it's just endearing. Endearing is, is the best is. word for it. For me, it put you in a bit of an awkward riding position and you had to really think about your riding position so you wouldn't then clatter banks and, and tight things. Yeah, but you um, know what? I, I, I found a thing about this because mm. I thought that when you stand up on it, it feels really weird. I got some friends out in India and they said that they don't actually design them to, be, to ride standing up. Those guys out there, when they're riding gnarly stuff, yeah. they're sat down and paddling. Yeah. And they think we're a bit weird for standing up. <laughs> and honestly, so that's why, so when you sit down and paddle on it, yeah. it makes perfect sense. <laughs> but I have to say that Himalayan, mm. every, I've ridden them a couple of times now, and every time I ride them, well, oh, don't set fire to me, they, they really blow my mind because they, everything on paper is not that great. The first impression is like, mm, it's a bit clunky and weird mm. and old, but you just can't help keep getting back on it and and, in, and having a smile yeah. in the ruts the big four before ruts it's constantly clattering the banks which really is really off-putting mm. you're, you're really nervous that and the fact that when you went downhill and tried to use the brakes if the brake was even slightly wet it didn't work yeah i did say that you've got to pull the brake pretty hard haven't you yeah i, I think for me yeah the brakes were an issue a massive issue because it it tracked through everything fine with the engine and you could get up to speed, and but you couldn't get down from like one time you just changed a rut, uh, and as normal I would just did my normal braking on any other bike, and I didn't stop. I was just coming right at you. And it's worth mentioning we picked on the KTM for the traction control yeah. turning itself back on. Yeah, there's none on the Himalayan, no. but the ABS is non-switchable unless you pull the fuse out. Yeah, which is quite annoying to be honest. Mm. Those two bikes there, we've just spent all day riding. So mm. we loaded them up with luggage, tents. We didn't cheat and use them. You cheated and went back to the van for a new crash helmet because you didn't I want did. to get your Dakar on muddy. Sorry. But Sorry. all the stuff we're camping out with, the fire, we, we've done this legit. This is, we, so we've been on a proper adventure and we camped mm. out with everything we had on the bikes. So yeah. the luggage side of them worked. We've ridden all day. We've ridden places where both you and I were off the bike pushing. Yep. We've ridden <laughs> through water that shouldn't be ridden through. Yep. And we've done all that on a couple of bikes that you could buy both of those for the price of one 1250 GS or one Super well, Adventure KTM. Yeah, now you say it like that, it, it actually, my dad would love that. He would. And 18-year-old yeah. me would love that. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this first inaugural episode of the, the Bike World Off-Road, Bike World in the Dirt, Bike World Adventure Show. If you can think of a better name for it than we could come <laughs> up with, stick it in the comments below and we'd love to hear your suggestions. It proves the point, you don't need to spend £20,000 on an adventure bike to have fun. We rode both these bikes as they come from the factory with the road tyres. We took the mirrors off, we took the foot peg rubbers off, and we thrashed them around ridiculous terrain. We've had an absolute blast. Brilliant day. There are four more of these lovely fizzy beverages to go through, <laughs> Neil. I'm going to drink them, then get on the whiskey, and then it'll be warm enough to go to sleep. Thanks everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed our show, and we'll see you on the next one.